that's as that's as big a fish as you want to land on the four way. I that was a little touch cast. I parachute. I just dropped that fly ever so delicately onto the water surface, and the fish saw the fly land. I can't tell you how important that is, you guys. A little bonus tip for watching my rod reviews in this channel, but. That, fly, that fish absolutely watched that fly hit and came completely out of the water to get it. He was so sold. Got him. That is a tank. About 18 inches, heavy. Let's get him back in the water. Okay, he's gone. That's how we release him nice and quick like that. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't, I'm not gonna contend you couldn't catch that fish with a whole hell of a lot of fly rods, but you have to have one that allows you to do all that kind of voodoo stuff and put English on it and do a little aerial mending to actually sell that fly to the fish. It's not enough to just drift it downstream. You actually have to deliver it in a way that sells it to those, especially the more mature trout. Fantastic, about an 18 inch cut. Oh wow. Look at that. Good. That's how we do Attaboy, it. Attaboy, Joe. So big, small, <laughs> LL catches them all. So pretty satisfied. So that particular fish was about within six inches of the bank. So I'll take a minute and just talk about it. Just I fished all about two miles with this rod now. Every single cast, you need a forgiving rod that will make a delicate delivery. I'm only casting 15 to 40 feet. 40 feet would be a long, long cast. So everything I'm doing is up really tight and close. Floaters. Uh, everything is up tight and close. Spectators, we got fan club out here. Uh, everything is up tight and close. You need a forgiving rod every single time that you make a cast at short range with dry flies. Short range can be anything sub 40 feet. I've thrown anything from a 10 foot cast today to a 40 foot cast, but every one of them has to be accurate right now. Good. All right, official end of review. We're pulling into the... Oh yeah, that's the big one, man. That's uh, that way took that top twice in the last week. Come on, Jack. It's a team effort here. We are pulling into the ramp. Jack rode me into this fish. And Curtis has just got done. <laughs> He's on the net. Uh, Put him to work. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make that fish look big though. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's a big fish. Oh man, Jack, this man is too cold, buddy. I can't fit in here. You don't fit in here, Joe. You're gonna have to really do it. You don't fit in here, Jack. I'm keeping up. Alright, we're back in. I got him. <laughs> Woo! Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to bring you in. I got him. Nice. Woo! Okay, end of review. <laughs> this rod's awesome. See the fish you catch on this thing? Let's get a quick look. That is a spectacular fish. Oh, wow, yeah. Apparently, look at the head on that thing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, dude, that was legit. Get it again, so, a team effort. <laughs> oh, let me get my so, phone dry. <laughs> so, I, in summary, we still filming? Yep, we're good. Get that hole so, on that job on camera there. Yeah, in, <laughs> in summary, we're pulling into it, like, literally at the boat launch, and the joke was, if I got one more big one, Jack got the fish, and I had to row. <laughs> right there. <laughs> so I waited to the very end, which I like to do. Curtis netted the fish, but anyway, in summary, that fish was how far from the bank, Jack? About two, three inches. Two to three inches. That's no joke. There is no better place to field test dry fly rods than this place at Reds right here. If you're looking for a dry fly rod for doing technical casting, Sage LL's fantastic. Did a legit field test on this thing from wade fishing to boat fishing, putting flies this close to the bank. Excellent rod. If you're, like I said, you're a Sage fan looking for a moderate action rod. Sage Lightline's a winner, that's for sure. Hey, 
update Joe at Red's Fly Shop here. First thing, not everybody should own as many fly rods as I do, so just because I review something doesn't always mean it's a call to buy. But if you're looking for a super classic dry fly rod, you have to check out the story of the Sage Trout Lightline series. So classic styling, this is really a legacy rod. It's a legend reborn. Let me know when you're in focus there. Uh, good. Okay, we got it. So classic styling, classic wraps. Look at the photos on the website if you want to see what it looks like. So this rod was, was originally Sage's number one selling rod. It had an 11-year run. They made this rod for 11 years from 1986 for 11 seasons all the way to 1997, I guess that would be. I had one of these back in the late 90s. It was one of the first very nice rods I have, and it's one of the few rods where the old ones actually went up in value. Now, I did a review of this rod back at the lawn, on the lawn at Reds about two weeks ago, and I looked at it, I go, man, that's just not a way to review a rod that's this classy and this cool. So first off, the Sage Light Line is exactly as its name implies. It's light tackle fishing. It's made for short casts, anywhere from 10 feet to 50 or 60 feet. Certainly this rod will cast further, but its accuracy and control is best at trout fishing distances, much like I'm fishing here. And I'm about to fish this side channel. So if this size water right here reflects where you're gonna be doing most of your trout fishing, this is a rod you should consider. The thing about more moderate or medium to medium fast action rods is that they allow you to do everything from a simple roll cast Something like maybe this right here of roll casting my fly over against that brush to drying my fly very comfortably, measuring distance with false casts very slow and comfortable so that I can carefully measure or calculate the distance. Uh, a lot of times I'm going to do things like I'm going to deliver a fly under this brush. Go ahead and come with me for a second and I'll show you. I've been fishing this rod for about two miles now and I want to get out on the river and review it through a, a big variety of, of conditions or situations. We fished from the boat, I threw long, I threw short, I waded small channels already. And it reminded me how important it is to have a rod that can shift into a ton of different gears. So let me show you something. So, go ahead and come up on my left side here, buddy. We're gonna shoot over my shoulder, all right? Okay, so this is not, we're gonna look right into this hole right here. So we got a hole in this brush right here. This is very common for a lot of anglers. Now, I could take a really fast action heavy rod and I could blast it back in there, but I need to set my fly down in those holes. I already fished this, so if you expect me to catch fish, I already tried, didn't get one. But with this rod, watch what I can do here. I can very carefully measure my distance in my loop with a relaxed casting stroke and I can just feather that throttle and I can throw that fly way back into those coves, but I can do so without having to have a fast stroke. So I can carefully measure it out, I can look at the loop, I can see what's happening, and then I can get that visual feedback and adjust my casting stroke so that I can make these near impossible casts like this right here. So I'll send it back in there again. I'm way, I'm five or six feet back in there, and of course it's a short spot, I can't hold the drift very long in there, but there is a huge need for rods for dry fly fishermen that want to be at that next level that can shift into a lot of different gears. The Sage Lightline series is a fantastic rod. If you're a Sage fan, maybe you had one of these back in the day, you want the upgraded version. This has Kinetic HD technology, it's Sage's best, highest performing graphite but the action mimics that classic one that made Sage fly rods what they are today. So I think it's a really good choice. It should be considered if you're, like I said, Sage customer, Sage fan, looking for a dry fly rod. I cast everything from the 389 up to the six weight. They're all fantastic. The preferred line on this for me was the Rio Technical Trout. That's the line I really like when I test cast at all the different weights. I'm throwing a Rio Perception today. It casts fine. I'm personally not that picky. I could cast a, a string on this thing. It's so easy to throw. But I like the Rio Technical Trout or the Rio Gold for a dry fly, kind of a, a dry fly setup. It'll cast a small nymph setup or a dry dropper or even a small woolly bugger or a light line. It'll work. 
But Sage Lightline Series, fantastic rod from 10 feet to 50 feet. You can't go wrong here. I'm going to try to catch a few more fish and wade fish this side channel right here behind me.